Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Good morning. I've been thinking about a moment in 1939. On July 4th, about two weeks after Lou Gehrig kind of made sense of what his body was feeling. He was diagnosed with ALS, and the news rippled the sports in the world. And on July 4th, 1939, he read this speech in front of 66,000 people. Fans, for the past two weeks, you've been reading about the bad break I got. Yet today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I've been in ballparks for 17 years and have never received anything but kindness and encouragement from you fans. Look at these grand men. Which of you wouldn't consider it the highlight of his career just to associate with them for even one day? Sure, I'm lucky. Who wouldn't consider it an honor to have known Jacob Rupert, also the builder of baseball's greatest empire, Ed Barrow, to spend six years with that wonderful little fellow, Miller Huggins, then to have spent the next nine years with that outstanding leader, that smart student of psychology, the best manager in baseball today, Joe McCarthy. Sure, I'm lucky. When the New York Giants, a team that you would give your right arm to beat, and vice versa, sends you a gift, that's something. When everybody down to the groundskeeper in those boys in white coats remembers you with trophies, that's something. When you have a wonderful mother-in-law who takes side with you and squabbles with her own daughter, that's something. When you have a father and mother who work all their lives so you can have an education and build your body, it's a blessing. When you have a wife who's been a tower of strength and shown more courage than you dreamed existed, that's the finest I know. So I close in saying that I have had a tough break, but I have an awful lot to live for. I'm blown away as uh, last night was, I think, the first time in our family where my son actually watched an entire football game all the way through. Sports is a lot in our lives. But I'm blown away kind of coming back to Garrick's example of humility. Here is the LeBron James of his time in baseball, the greatest who had ever played coming to the reality that his time had ended. And what does he do? He looks at everybody who helped get him there. Maybe the biggest miracle in all of it. (laughs) He lifts up his mother-in-law. Not what we expected to hear. So radically different than when I was growing up, the Carmelo Anthony, who, when he had won the best player in the NBA, thanked himself for all the hard work of getting himself there. So I've been thinking about humility. I've been thinking about our common fabric as a society, what it is that we're missing, why it is that it is so painful to live in this world the suffering that we see on a day-to-day basis, or certainly the suffering we see if we are watching the news, the pain of many. And I'm struck that, you know, we have this lectionary, we hear Scripture over and over, and often it's kind of on a three-year cycle. But the reading from Philippians that we hear this morning is the one of the only passages that we hear over and over again a few times a year. It's this beautiful hymn that Paul offers to the community. It's probably older than the letter itself. And he's looking at the Philippians and he says, look, 
We've been sharing in compassion and sympathy, and we're hoping that our joy is made complete in God, but you need to have the same mind as Christ Jesus. And the way that you do that is you empty yourselves like Christ did. The image is not about what we can learn or achieve or build up, but is a self-emptying. It is the ultimate act of humility. And so I've been thinking about Garrick's letter that there is a result that happens when we empty ourselves. It is not that we lose everything. It's that we see the importance of everyone else. We recognize the interconnectedness of our shared humanity. We see the groundskeepers and the people in white coats and the mother-in-laws and the other players as just as important as we are, if not more. You know, the problem in the world and what Christianity offers is that we need each other. We need each other. The sin, and we reflected about this a little bit in the questions in Westina's lecture on Thursday, that possibly somebody had suggested that sin of racism was the first thing that we experienced is the kind of thing that we're existing as human beings. But it, it goes beyond that. It's the sin of, of seeing otherness in human beings. It's recognizing that we don't need somebody or we don't value them or they're less important. I mean, think about all the brokenness that we are facing. It is because we are divided. That's what hum humanity wants us to do. I mean, it's been going on for as long as we have existed. We don't see the importance of other. We don't feel empathy or pain when others are hurting. But when we empty ourselves, we see how connected we are. I'm excited about something that we have begun over the last week. Um, beginning on Thursday night and following all the way up through this Thursday, 60 parishioners from St. Stephen's are sharing, are de hand-delivering our stewardship campaign cards with one and a half ounces of honey. And in that letter that you might have received or received this week, gives the image of the highs that are just a hundred yards to my left, where 200,000 bees have no purpose except to care for each other and to care for the land that they are entrusted with. There is no hierarchy. All they do, all they do is support the community. They support the one bee that creates life, the God bee. What an image for the church. The sin of the world is wanting you to divide from each other. Either it's ego or pride or ambition. But Paul is inviting us to consider an alternative to empty ourselves until all we see is everyone else. That is humility. That is the image 
that we can offer as a Christian community to learn how to love, to learn how to let our egos go, and see the necessity of every human being to see their role in Christ's kingdom. May we all join together in this important work. And may we give of ourselves, our treasure, and our lives so much that all we can see is everyone else. Amen.